In this video we're gonna see how to replace the high pressure fuel pump from this Mercedes W177. Now to confirm that the high pressure pump is faulty you need to read the live data of the fuel pressure sensors. We've got this one which will give feedback of the high pressure fuel pump. We can see the pressure it's 24,000 kilopascals and now let's increase the engine rpm. And you can see the fuel pressure is actually steady once I decrease it, it goes up a little bit. That's a good sign. You can see this green light went up when the engine RPM went down. I'm going to drive the car and take a screenshot. All right, so you can see we got some different reaction here compared to before. The fuel rail pressure, it's keeping up with the load. And then we've got another fuel pressure sensor on the pump itself. Now another symptom of a failed high pressure fuel pump is when the pump is leaking gasoline into the crankcase therefore the gasoline will mix with oil and those gasoline vapors will travel through the oil separator into the PCV system and therefore they will be recirculated into the system forced and the computer will not expect that therefore you're gonna see a very negative fuel trim when you watch the live data on the scan tool so some of those gasoline vapors will go inside the cabin and you're gonna feel the smell of gasoline. However, you might think that the pump is leaking externally, when in reality most of the time it's gonna leak internally through that piston which is activated by the camshaft. Check the live data with the fuel trims and check the oil level because most of the time you're gonna find the oil level over the limit. But on this car it's measured electronically so you probably get a message inside the dashboard because you cannot measure the oil level with a dipstick on this car. Although it's quite strange because we've got here the port where we can put the dipstick for the automatic transmission fluid but not for the engine oil and that's pretty strange. So enough with the explanation, now let's go ahead and see how to remove this pump from here. So let's obstruct this line because sometimes the first fuel pump can be activated. We've got here this cushion, this is meant to protect it from rust and stuff like that. Here is the part number, let's unplug this connector. Just push up this clip like that and it will come out. Next you're gonna need a 19 millimeter and remove this delivery line. Okay, so there is still pressure in there. So there is not much pressure left. And the line is out. Now if you don't replace this, make sure that you keep it in a clean environment because you don't want to have debris inside here. Because once they enter here, they will basically arrive at the tip of the injector and they will clog up the injector. Now we've got this line which comes from the first fuel pump. This line is deep in this connection here on the high pressure pump. So in order to not bend it, we gotta get access to a bolt here which is right behind this connector. And then we've got one more there. These are two E10. So we need to remove this solenoid from here. This is for the variable valve timing. We've got one more here. Now we've got the line removed. Let's place this here. Okay, so we're gonna need a T30. We need to release the tension equally. Okay. And here it comes. Surprisingly, there is not much oil on it. Okay, so on the pump, I think I was mistaken that this is a pressure sensor, which now I believe it's more like a pressure regulator because we've got only two pins. So here is the part number of the pump. One simple test is to smell it in this area here and you should not feel any smell of gasoline. Also, if for example you find oil leaks in this area here, you have to inspect this rubber gasket. It should rise above these two surfaces. In that way, you know, it's gonna seal from the oil. Okay, so now to install it back, you need to match it in there. There is also a piston in there which we can take it out and replace it. Okay, so you gotta torque these bolts to 15 newton meters. Let's reconnect this line here. Install back these bolts. For these, you need 10 newton meters. Now just place this line on and tight by hands these nuts. Just make sure you tighten them equally and do not apply too much force. Just remember the same force you applied when you remove them. So that's going to be around 50 newton meters. Alright. 
and plug in the connector with the safety on. Let's release the pressure. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it about the high pressure pump from this car. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the playlist with more videos I made about this car. Also, subscribe for more free videos like this.